In this last video, I'm going to actually show you how uh, Enforcer works with the uh, the AST transforms. I've already gone over uh, how the service works and how to extend that. But in this one, I'm going to talk about uh, the AST transformations, which I think are the you know most important part of you know what gives you the flexibility to have like this DSL for enforcing business rules. Now, what I use is I use a particular uh, test AST project, which I do have plans to upgrade this eventually to Grails 3, but I'm still using uh, Grails 2.4.4. Uh, uh, one of the advantages of that is anything that runs in that will, you know, run in like the older version. So, you know, it gives me uh, a way to, you know, see that things actually run in the older versions, um, kind of forcing that. Uh, but let's take a look at that. Um, but before I do, one of the things to mention is the way that I'm uh, doing the annotation precompiles is using the underscore events.groovy. So let's take a look at that. And let's see. So that's under scripts underscore events and this is just the code so if you look you know if you uh, find the test AST under my in my github uh, you'll see that uh, there's you know this which does the pre compilation of everything that's under the source groovy com uh, virtual dog dot AST so basically this uh, Precompiles all the AST transforms because those the AST transforms are abstract syntax tree transforms which run at compile time that manipulate the code. So it's like kind of like uh, compile time metaprogramming. So let's take a look at the Enforcer AST transform, and this is like some of the least groovy looking code you'll probably ever see in groovy but it is also some of the most powerful and enables you to do the very groovy uh, annotations that do some very powerful things that you may have seen uh, within the groovy language now all of these um, work uh, you know using various uh, nodes, expressions, statements, and they use this uh, visit, which, you know, basically, you know, it visits all the annotations, and you, you know, can pull out the nodes and, you know, basically, you know, apply uh, different logic based on, you know, what the nodes are. This little check here, you know, I check to see whether I'm applying it to a method node or a class node and I have slightly different logic for each uh, if it's a class node I go then apply it to all the method nodes below it and like in my apply uh, one I check to you know make sure that I'm applying it to something that has you know the enforce class on it and I do a check here to see if this has, uh, you know, the annotation like uh, on the enforce, that you know, I skip it so that it does. Uh, this is what allows uh, so that uh, the method node overrides the class node uh, representation of uh, enforce. And basically, what I do is, uh, you know, I, I get the, you know. Uh, let's see the method body and I get the code of that I get the statements and I add my call to the enforcer um, service which I'll show you in a little bit and then I I call this which is something even I this is like black magic to me but it's uh, it fixes the variable scope of the injected code and when I go to uh, the G3 Summit this year, I'm going to see if I can, uh, you know, basically ha ha get a little bit more explanation on how the variable scopes work and how I might, you know, manipulate them in future annotations or future AST transforms. But for, for now, this just kind of cleans that up. 
Um, and I also have like just a helper method here, which you know builds up my parameter list of all the closures and defaults and everything. And here's basically this is the the main part of you know how I'm calling uh, the AST transforms. So basically, you know, you can see I'm getting a holder. I get the you know Grails application context. I do a get bean on the enforcer service. And I call the enforce and I pass the params and basically that gets built into an expression call which I wrap in a statement and that statement gets added to all the other statements. So it's just a very different way of looking at how you can actually build code because like I said this all happens at compile time. Now uh, one thing that um, I do is uh, if you run like, uh, well, actually, if I go to, say, one of these um, specs where I have the annotation, if I run Groovy Console and I uh, copy this into Groovy Console, there's an AST uh, viewer which allows you to view the output of uh, the code and see what actually um, happens and let's see do I have that here group grails console so let's see if I can actually run that and just give you a you know quick little demonstration with like something that's very simple because I'm not sure if I have this set up to do that so yeah I'll paste this in here and we'll go to script and uh, inspect AST and that came up off screen so we'll move that oh yeah I have to do the whole entire class so let's go back here and just do a control A and paste that in there and do a script Spect AST, so hopefully that won't have any compilation errors. So this will look very different than what you've ever seen Groovy look like before, because this applies all of the, you know, AST transformations that happen, you know, in the background that you don't even see, uh, you know, because there's also global AST transforms. So let's see here. Um, so here's uh, one particular one where, you know, there's uh, a particular annotation where I'm sending in, uh, let's see, the a failure and a value of true. And basically you can see this code actually gets injected in there. Um, actually, let's see, there's a, a simpler one here where it's like basically all I'm sending in is uh, the value of the closure equals true. And you can see here is my call to Grails Utils Holder, uh, get application, get bean, enforcer service, enforce, and it passes that one particular controller, uh, not controller, that one particular closure. So, you know, this is one of the ways that you can use to actually debug and see what your code actually produces. Um, it's also a very good way, um, actually, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. You can actually look through, uh, you know, the various structure, you know, the nodes and the statements and get an idea of how uh, Groovy actually uh, creates the um, you know the the actual logic based on what you write in code so you can see oh this creates a block statement an expression statement and a binary thing it, field and you know you can look at the various pieces and this kind of gives you uh, a deeper understanding of how like the groovy compiler works so it's it's like looking behind the covers and you know seeing how all the magic actually works and once you see how the magic works you realize it's not really magic it's you know it's just logic so that's uh, you know how I built up these uh, AST transforms 
and like I said, they're very, uh, these are kind of very difficult uh, to, to code just because it's a very different mindset. Uh, another thing is with this particular example project, uh, since I'm using the pre-compilation within IntelliJ, I can actually set breakpoints in the AST transformation and see how it works and, you know, what, you know, basically debug it like how I would um, debug any other code. So it's it's a very good uh, starting point. If you want to play around with AST transforms, I would take a look at, you know, this particular project. Um, so that's pretty much it for the uh, videos and the documentation. So go out and enforce some uh, business rules.